Hey guys, what it do? It's your boy Supreme Chia the God. Welcome to yet another video essay. Make sure to subscribe, leave a comment and like because you know we're trying to really reach the 600. I know my uploading this month has been the weakest it's been in a minute, but we're going to bring it back. We're going to bring it back. Uh, so let's talk about it. In part two of Tower God, we're introduced to a boy on the 20th floor of the tower. The boy has strikingly yellow hair and red horns on the back of his head. What truly intrigues us is how he receives no formal introduction. Was simply thrown into his world, his life, his journey up to the Tower of God. The decision for the author to show stories beyond our protagonist and introduce, introduce us to a new one so abruptly was both bold and genius at the same time. It made us all question who this person might be, what the importance to the story will ultimately be, and why we should care at all. The 20th floor is a place where dreams die, where the tower sorts out the weak from the strong, and many live their lives normally within the tower there due to both the price and difficulty of completing and passing the test on this particular floor. The first thing we learn about this peculiar character, Wang Nan, is that he dreams to be the king of the tower. This clearly differentiates him from what we know of Bam and all of our main characters. All of our current protagonists want to go beyond the known 135th floor and continue their adventure as a collective to see the far and beyond and bring Rachel to the clear open skies. Wang Nan wants instead to rule the tower, and whether that requires him to go beyond this flow, we must, you know, wait and see. But one thing is certain, Zahad or Jahad must be dethroned, a goal later shared by the rest of our protagonists. The most interesting thing about a yellow-haired boy is that he seems to be ultimately extremely, and I mean extremely weak. In fact, it's to a point where one must wonder how he made it to the 20th floor in the first place. Especially at this point in the story, having witnessed many, many of the previous floors, it is understood that strength is not the only way to climb the tower. Thank God for him. However, any of the qualities that we had at that stage known to help in climbing the tower were qualities we could not immediately see within Wang Nan. There was one small, tiny little detail that we may have initially missed as well. You see, despite being so weak he was burnt alive and yet he was alive with only minor injuries we know clearly that people die within the tower pretty frequently in fact and let's not forget all other participants that were burnt burnt that day died but Wang Nan he did not as we continue to learn about this new mysterious character we discover that he's been stuck on the same floor for quite some time. We also find out that he's in debt with some loan sharks who are very, very angry that he has not yet returned them the funds. The loan shark decides to allow him one more chance. A picture of the loan shark should be somewhere here. He's, he, he's pretty pale. Um, well, this of course is later discovered to be a smart tactic that the loan sharks use to keep residents of the 20th floor indebted to them. By readily encouraging them to try the test again and again and again, or you know they could face the chance, you know, face the chance of losing their organs or perhaps even their lives. This creates a great continuous stream of income, as most residents must work to continuously pay off their debts, and the collectors get richer and richer and richer. Wang Nan, ah, not being too special of a boy, he falls into the trap and tries again and again to climb the 20th floor. But maybe this time his luck will change and a member of the 10 families won't burn him alive again, right? His spirit will not allow him to bend or fold. Unfortunately for him, he meets a person that will most definitely change the tower and we're not really sure if he'll be in a positive or negative way. But we do know that what he's going to do will be far bigger things than all other irregulars have done. And his name, well, you guys guessed it, Vial Grace. He stands in front of him, bodies strewn around him. His wits, Wang Nance, that is, begin to show. I just suggest to Vial, like, yo, hold up a minute. We could just team up and get rid of the rest of the newcomers. I mean, after all, the rules never indicated how many survivors had to make it. He just said that you have to survive the room for 30 minutes funny we discover that his arsenal when he does get into a scrap with uh with our boy val grace aka bam 
His arsenal essentially consists of pokeballs or shinsu bombs. And he seems to have very, very, very weak resistance to shinsu in general. Um, so you're like, wait, his moves are throwing shinsu bombs and he has weak resistance to shinsu. This is not adding up. And this is very, very peculiar, if especially with his weakness to shinsu resistance. Because you remember how the higher you go up the tower, the more intense the shinsu becomes. We've also been told that, well, he knows many of the tower's secrets. However, his actions seem to prove otherwise. This is also explained within the story. Wang Nan seems to be a lot older than he looks. Similar in age to Karaka, but relatively young in the tower, but much older than most of our main cast. His age is important because of how much he has been through and how many people he has lost in his pursuit of changing and ruling the tower. It is suggested that he himself has managed to self-hypnotize in order to forget all the painful deaths that he seems to blame himself for. Survivor's guilt, if you may. Now, during the untrustworthy room, we discover a few key things about our boy Wang Nan, Yellow Boy Lightning, you know. Despite his seemingly selfishness, well, he's seemingly being selfish in the first few tests where he was willing to survive by all, most, almost, not every, but almost every, any means possible. This time he sees more flaws in the tower and its system when he decides to forgive Lurker. Oh, that's, that's that Lone Shark dude that should be on screen somewhere. All the characters, pictures, just, just to let you know, for you guys' convenience that I'm going to mention in this little video essay will be on screen at all times so you can just have a peeper if you like who the fuck is this person you know what I'm saying? but anyway he sees more flaws in the tower in its system when he decides to forgive lurker in hopes that the others will forgive himself and nia later on through his conversation with huaran i cannot say that name you know what i'm saying but her she also on screen she calls him the prince of the red light district it becomes a name that a lot of people refer to him as Something that I am certain will also play a major role later in the story of Tower of God. But for now, we'll talk about Wang Nen's will. Similar to Bam, he is a person that refuses to leave a friend behind. We we'll learn of this firstly during the untrustworthy room, of course, with Nia. And him tricking Bam in order for the rest of his team to survive. And a bunch more times during the workshop aisles. He wants to help Bam to meet his friends. And when Hori Yang loses his devil's arm, he... Does whatever it takes and steps into the hell train in order to save his life by forcing Kasano to return with them. However, his goal, yet again, costs blood. And a lot of it at that. As Acropator, Acropactor, Acropactor, man, can somebody tell me how to pronounce that? Dies to protect Wang Nen from Yura and Rachel. To make matters worse, Misen gets captured and our dear prince is consumed and killed by White. This drives Wang Nan closer to the edge than we've ever seen him. He soon discovers that despite Jahad not being able to bear children, that he does indeed have Jahad's, Jahad's blood within him and the ring with Jahad's symbol. Many, many theorize that he and Karaka are brothers and hold the other piece of the puzzle in defeating Jahad. In fact, they may be the only ones that might have the power to end Jahad's life. Which is interesting when we consider just how weak he is. But you see, I skipped a little bit of details. Because during the workshop's final test, Wang Nen was stabbed in the heart. But not only did he survive, he also recovered within a single day. Perhaps his fear of losing those he loves may have something to do with him being so weak. Or perhaps the ring he carries may be containing a limiter. Or the key to him unlocking his powers. He also confronts Karaka about the ring, but they are cut short before we learn any more details about the two. After all, we are aware that Karaka can't be killed, and at least, seemingly, seems to use secondary bodies for battle, which explains him exploding one of his bodies in the dead floor. While his heart is hidden within his armor in a sim <laughs> seemingly different dimension. I, I had a typo there that almost fucked with me. Wang Nan later gets, gains a powerful companion in a talking sword, 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 <laughs> who also refers to him as the Prince of the Light District. It, it critiques him and tells him that he will never gain anything by continuing on the road that he is currently at. But of course, blood must be spilled before it would grant him his wish of power, power to protect those he loves. We don't see much of him after this, and the final time we see him, his friend Horiyangi saved as Kasano kept his promise. 
We are uncertain what he and Misang went through during that one year gap. However, he returns with a new look. He, he looks pretty cool. And a determination unlike anything we've seen before. I look forward to discovering more about my favorite character in the tower. The character that Uru has stated to be a major player in the Tower of God alongside Karaka. Now, Uru is the author for those that don't know. A pseudo protagonist of the story, Wang Nen is, if you may. Thanks for watching. It's been your boy, Supreme Chia the God. I hope you guys enjoyed the video essay. We're going to try to have way more of these. I'm going to try to make them longer and longer and longer. I don't even know how I managed to stretch it just 10 minutes, but we did. So please, YouTube algorithms, bless me. I'm, I'm, I'm back. It's been your boy, Supreme Chia the God. Road to 600, baby. We got this. Peace, peace, peace.